hello my name is Cynthia welcome to my floss tube channel if you love beautiful needlework you like to talk about it you like to see examples of it and most importantly you hope to be inspired to create your own beautiful projects you're in the right place Welcome to my channel, Stitching in the Light. I thank you for visiting with me today and for your great response to my last floss tube, floss tube number 21. I had the highest number of views that I've ever had on my channel. I don't know if someone mentioned me or if um, y'all just like the same things that I do. I love to stitch bees and I love to stitch samplers. So um, I have lots of that to show to you today. I also have some um, finished projects that aren't cross stitch and then I have some finishes of cross stitch that I'm going to actually show later in the video um, possibly even tomorrow as a separate segment because I'm very very close to finishing um, and I might take a few pictures of how I do the um, complete finishing and do some voiceover with that this is the time I have with a quiet empty house which is very very rare for me so I didn't want to use that time finishing up these pieces I wanted to share um, all the things I had to show you and then update those finishes at the end of the video so stay tuned for that I also wanted to mention a few of the um, not questions but comments that I got in my last video I had several that were um, considering joining in on the Sitch Lilies on Sunday Sal, where I am co-hosting with Marissa from Marissa Creates, um, a Sal to Stitch Consider the Lilies by Heartstring Sampler every Sunday. I do have the progress to show you of what I did on that Sunday. And um, I also wanted to thank Claire C and Celeste for joining in on that Sal or mentioning that they would and several others that have since joined. If you want to follow along, I have the hashtag listed below. You can find that on Instagram. It's not on Facebook or YouTube, it's on Instagram. The um, other thing I wanted to mention about Celeste, another stitcher for our Sal, has, um, Celeste has a new floss tube channel. She's another Texas stitcher. I'm from Fort Worth. She's, I believe in the Houston area. Um, and she's a beautiful quilter and has been in and out of cross stitch and returned, I think, um, with quite a vengeance. She's doing great work on Consider the Lilies. She has a very sweet, soft-spoken spirit. I think you would really enjoy her channel. I will link that below. Again, her name is Celeste Creates. She's very active on Instagram as well. And the other floss tuber um, is a viewer, Merritt Crawford. I think her channel um, is linked by Merritt Crawford, but she has another name for her channel, um, like Thread Tales or something like that. She's a wool applique quilter and a stitcher, and she has beautiful projects to share and a very sweet spirit as well. So I think she's very like-minded. Um, for both me and Celeste. So if you enjoy our channel, I think you would like her as well. I will link her channel below. Um, I also wanted to insert a picture. I didn't bring it up because it's kind of heavy. I did finally lace My Love Never Fails. It usually sits behind me, but I put it in its permanent home, which is outside of my master bedroom. It's an anniversary piece for my husband and I. And so I had finished it last June. You can look back on the floss tube where I showed that with my uh, son and daughter helping me hold it up. It's so heavy, um, but I had never laced it. It was just loosely propped in there. So it is finally laced and framed. I have painted my hallway and it is um, in its final place. So I will insert a video of that here. In that video, I also showcase a um, finished project. <laughs> it's not really an object, it's a hallway. I had um, slowly been working my way through this rather large house that we got with builder grade flat paint in every single space, which with four children, two in at the time preschool when we moved in, um, the walls have taken a beating. So every wall is 
needing a uh, paintbrush and I was so happy to finish that Saturday before last. It has nine foot ceiling so I was really tired. I didn't get a lot of stitching done that Saturday um, but I was happy with the color. It's a grab and go paint can from Walmart which I really appreciate because I don't have to wait for um, a clerk to mix the paint and you don't have to um, you know, hunt around for somebody to help you. You just grab it and uh, it did take a lot of stirring, but it's a really beautiful color for samplers. Um, it has a lot of warmth to it. So if you like antiques, it's gonna be a nice place for me to display needlework outside of sunlight. Okay, I worked on lots of different projects over the last two weeks. It's probably why I didn't quite get finished with the two that I wanted to show, but um, like I said, hopefully I'll patch that segment in at the end. I had um, a lot of progress on the potting shed by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. This one is a lot of fun and it's going pretty quickly. I'm using the um, called for threads for the most part. I over dyed these two up front. When they came in they were um, a little bit too bright and so I dipped those in some dark brown writ and instant coffee and they're turning out really nice. Here's my progress so far. I have a couple pots over here. I have some honey um, or bee skips to do there and the lettering I was starting on. So we're really close. I'm really close to a finish I feel like, but um, still not quite there. I love that design though, it's so cute. The sheep need some feet and the wheels need a cart. The cart need wheels, <laughs> needs wheels, but it's getting close. And um, this is a fabric from Victorian Motto Sampler. I get the 32 count. So this is two threads over two. And I think she called this Antique Sampler, but her um, fabrics are a one-off. So she just does a um, solo dye each month. You can't get them again, but it's really pretty. And I'll have quite a bit left over. Um, probably enough to do like a um, couple of ornaments on, some smalls, so really good price and really good good quality fabric. Um, the other one I worked on is Sub Rosa's Sunflower Garden. I didn't get a lot done on this, I just kind of wanted to see how those threads look. They were so unique to me. That color scheme is really special. So. I did go ahead and use the charcoal fabric that I had said in previous floss tubes was set aside for um, another project, but I was like, no, I'm using it for that. So I got her um, skirt started in that. I think I said that color was called bourbon, but it's cognac. I'm not a drinker, so I don't know the names of things. And then that sunflower is a whiskey, and the fence was supposed to be a fa another thread and I used Swiss chocolate. So it's really variegated and cool though. And it's gonna be pretty. I'm gonna get back to that after I finish the pieces that are almost done. So hopefully, sorry I keep dropping things today. Hopefully I will have some more to show you next time. Um, this piece I'm gonna show you is so close to being done and I hope to show it completely FFO'd um, at the end of this video. This embroidery piece is by um, Kathy Schmitz. It's just a $1 download PDF. And you use, um, I thought it was one color, but you actually use two colors that are kind of tweeted together. This gold, and I just used what I had. I, I didn't, she said to use mascara, I think, and whiskey but I didn't want to, I'm sorry, Schneckley and mascara, but I didn't really want to use a fancy floss on this. So I just did um, a DMC that was kind of a gold and then um, 3371, you know, the brown black from DMC. And it's not perfect. <laughs> this is probably my biggest embroidery piece that I've done. I mean, it's not big, but I haven't done hardly any embroidery at all. And it does take some practice. Um, there's some shading lines that I'm gonna add in there to help kind of define it a little bit, but my stitches are not the same length. I know that takes practice. So um, it is one of the reasons why I wanted to try this because 
it is getting better as I go. So it's going to be really cute. I'm going to have some sari that hangs from below and it's going to hang with some charms and a bell. So I just think it's so cute. There's a little crown at the top and uh, the lazy daisy stitches. And I did my first successful colonial knot. I was so proud of myself. If you followed my channel for a while, I have been on a mission to learn. There's my cat in the background scratching himself. I hope he's almost done. Um, I have been on a mission to do a French knot and have not had any success. Even my mother-in-law sat down with me and I just, I'm hopeless at it. But um, Cheryl McKinney in her ABC um, series on her channel had shown a colonial knot really slowly, really well defined, and I was really happy to succeed. <laughs> so I have quite a few to do at the bottom of that row there and a couple at the top along the crown. So that's some good practice. This is basically what I wanted to use this for. You're probably supposed to do it like in a hoop, but this was just a scrap I had from some of the other crafts I've done. It's of um, kind of some really grungy tea toweling that I had dyed and it looked just like the photo or real close. So I thought, no, I'm just going to stitch it in hand and it's working out okay. A hoop would probably be easier, but I really like how that's turning out and I'll show you it completely finished at the end. The other piece that I am so close to finishing, um, I don't see the pattern for it. I've got a whole pile here, so I think I must have toppled a little bit. This is free, so I can show you the um, chart. I won't show it too long, but it's from the Blackberry Rabbit. And of course I've changed all the colors just about. I did this uh, um, kind of few strands of each of those flosses rather than monopolize my whole, you know, five or 10 yards of what I had. I just took about, I don't know, 10 or 12 strands and put it on one of those hooks. And the colors are so distinct in the pattern that I didn't have to label it. You only got like one yellow, one blue, one purple. And uh, I am so close to finishing this. I was working on it last night and I got a little bit off. I had this heart at the top, just a couple stitches over and it didn't coincide with the heart below it. I'm uh, learning that <laughs> these pieces that are completely symmetrical on each side, you have to be really careful. It's almost like, I mean, it's exactly like having your border meet all the way around on your sampler. Um, and so what I did on this side, cause I know I have a mistake here that gets this off. I went ahead and made sure that the heart was in the right place this time. And I'm just gonna fudge either side of that. At least the main pieces will be symmetrical. And then um, it doesn't matter if they are kind of made up. It's such a tiny little stitch. Um, but like I said, it was a little harder than I expected. And it is a lot of almost confetti stitching because you've got like 10 different colors there right in a row. And I was kind of parking my threads, just leaving them up and changing my needle. Um, so it wasn't quite as simple. It has some pretty shading there and some backstitch they had uh, recommended I'm not gonna do because on this natural linen, this is a 32 count natural linen from um, Zweigart, it doesn't um, really need it, I don't think. The white shows up really well. And then that light gray just makes a really pretty shadow. What I'm gonna put this on, and like I said, I'll show you this all done at the end. It's gonna be like an oval or a squoval. <laughs> it's not really a square, it's not really an oval. Um, I'm gonna make this kind of, um, yeah, you can see where I carried all my threads. <laughs> I'm gonna make this on a little bit of a domed finish with some batting and then do a gathering stitch around the back and put it on this charcuterie board. I always feel kind of fancy when I say that. This I finished yesterday and I was really happy with how it came out. It was just that, you know, light kind of um, brown. I went ahead and finished both sides just so it looks nicer. If I want to prop it on an easel or something, um, I used not black. It was called espresso from Michaels. So it almost looks like 3371. It's not totally black, but it's almost and um it's gonna look really pretty i think together i was gonna do a punch needle on this and i actually went and picked up two more of these from hobby lobby so i will be doing a punch needle but um i also thought that that bee would look really cute and when i um finished i did kind of scrape the edges i didn't even have sandpaper so i just used a, a screwdriver <laughs> and kind of scraped it off and then i put some um 
Spree Wax on top so that it kind of has that fun prim finish and looks really nice. So that is ready for the bee. And I will put that in, um, but I'll show you at the end. The other project I worked on, um, just one day a month, I work on the Long Dog Leap Day Sal, and it was sponsored by, I think Aaron from Two Martini Stitcher started this sal. I am doing a very small Long Dog. I hope to finish this one though and start Pandemic, which is not small. The um, Black House is just 111 by 145. So I'm almost done with this bottom corner and I didn't do a ton of stitching because I forgot until like eight o'clock that it was the 29th. I've actually put it on my phone as a reoccurring event so that I'll remember. And uh, I was able to do quite a bit of the black fill in. You can see those woodpeckers on the side. They're really cute. And then um, I've run out of some threads on the edges there. And one of the things I did do, these are my conversion. This, this project, if you look at it online, on the Google images is really like hot pinks and greens and teals. It's very um, almost tropical, which is not the vibe that I got from the um, cover. This is the color story I wanted. And I'm trying to match my threads to the cover. Um, I did have a few little hiccups with the greens, not realizing that that bottom woodpecker is the color that is the leaf on the edge here. And so I have written down, um, I forgot to share this in Stitchy Hall last time. I got a really cute little index card um, flip file from the same friend that sent me those thread drops and it's, I think Needlework Press puts it out, but you could use just, you know, one of those wired index cards. And I'm keeping my projects in here with the flosses. Some of them I'm still working on kitting up. And so I just have a checkbox. Some of them I have completely changed. I already shared that one for Honey Bee in my cup. And then um, this one is another that, is kind of showing where I'm going so far with my conversion. And instead of trying to continue to rob Peter to pay Paul kind of situation, I think we all do this when you have, um, say like a week Styleworks Crimson and you just need a little bit for this one. So you borrow it from that project. And then you're like, where did that week Styleworks Crimson go? I know it's in one of these projects, but you forget. My hope is to use this as kind of like a master key to, these are all the threads that I have kitted up. I know what I have in my drawers and I can look and see, but I forget, you know, what I have in a kit. So, um, and I am intending to purchase a few of those threads so that they will be dedicated to that project. I really don't like the back and forth thing. I'm much more likely to lose a floss or to, um, like I said, forget. Where is that floss? I forgot. Um, that only gets pulled out once a month. So it has lots of time to be, you know, kind of in the back of my mind. So this is another tip. I hope that um, it might be helpful to some of y'all. And then I had, the work that I did on 24 hours of cross stitch. I do love that challenge that Jen Lee puts out every quarter. Um, I don't do it 24 hours solid. I heard a lot of chatter on Facebook and some of my groups like, who could do that? Why would you do that? That's crazy. A lot of people don't. <laughs> it's not um, really working out that way for a lot of people. You just try to do over a three day period, however much stitching you can get in. And I do find myself really focusing pretty well on a project. I finished my, um, or almost finished my Stacy Nash, Miss Baxter's house during the last uh, 24 hours of cross stitch. And I think next time I will focus on one piece because I tried to do a different piece each day and um, I didn't find as much progress. <laughs> so, and I didn't get to 24 hours. I actually put a stopwatch on, let it run and then stopped it every time I wasn't working on it. And I stopped at 16 hours, which over three days is a lot more than I usually get to stitch. Um, so that was nice, but I did work about three or four hours on my Hawkrun Hollow block. It's the, one that's straight down. I did it as a way to kind of close my exits. I had talked to y'all about cutting this off at the halfway point. Gosh, it looks so good in the light up here. I really love it. I had talked about cutting it off though and making it a half Hawkrun Hollow and 
I changed my mind and decided to keep going. So as an effort to close that exit, I went down. And I think I'll kind of work in a circle and finish here so that I don't, um, you know, go with my <laughs> initial plan of cutting it off. But this block is a lot different than the other colors around it. It has much more of a limey kind of aqua, even than it shows up there. And the lettering I'm using is that um, Gentle Arts Lagoon. So it's much more variegated maybe than what she charted. MPIs do not have any variegation. Um, the charted silks, I basically am just using the DMC conversion and then I'm subbing in a few Gentle Arts because Gentle Arts are my favorite. And those words get pretty light at the end up there. Um, I just got a message. Thank you, Linda. Um, I will keep going and probably use more of the darker strands, but that one got kind of faded and I liked it. Makes it look more antique, I thought. So I got the house started or the little log cabin and I filled in, you can't really tell, but that's hundreds of stitches right there. All the green is just solid. So all the solid part is almost done. I just have a little more here and then I just have some birds and more letters and more birds. So I'm hoping to keep with that and I'm focusing on it on Friday evenings with my friend Becky. Um, Socks for Mom, we send each other a picture on Instagram at the beginning and at the end of our time. So it helps keep me motivated. So I love that one. I got, like I said, about three or four hours on that Friday and saw a good jump in progress. So that was encouraging. On Saturday of the 24 hours weekend, I worked on, oh, I got these a little out of order, Barbara Anna Designs, the All Creatures Great and Small. And this one, part of why I didn't think I could do counted cross stitch. Um, if you're new to my channel, I am not a very experienced stitcher. I started stitching um, in 2018 after I saw Priscilla and Chelsea's home tour for their patriotic home. It just popped up in my feed. I usually would watch, you know, home decor and design and their cross stitch ideas were so revolutionary to me that I thought, well, I want to do that. And so I picked up a needle in July of 2018 and I'm not a very experienced stitcher. Um, counting sometimes can give me fits. This hill is so complicated and it's spread over two pages. So I'm trying to line it up and my pattern from Creative Poppy, you can download this PDF. In fact, I have my password covered up here because I have it password protected and I can get back into it. Um, maybe I should try to stitch it from my computer. I don't know, because um, you could probably blow it up, but it was so hard to follow. I kept messing up. I think I restitched this hill on Friday three times. And finally, I just kind of quit because I thought, this is not working, <laughs> what I'm trying to do. I could not get this to be counted out. And you have to count like, oh gosh, I don't remember, like 70 stitches or some ridiculous amount. And I had done the, you know, half cross um, every 10th. You can kind of see that there. So I was really careful. This is so um, crucial to the piece because it's right in the middle. So if this is off, if that hill is off, or that um, cartouche above the house, then you're gonna be in real trouble. And uh, you know, I already have a woodpecker that's eating a tree instead of standing. It's not supposed to be a woodpecker. I turned this into a woodpecker because he was in the wrong place. I had a page break problem there. I miscounted um, for the tree. It's supposed to be closer to that border, but I made it work and I made sure that the letters were in the right spot. So you can kinda you know, shift back to being back on track, but this one was just driving me nutty. So I went on to the cartouche above, I filled in some more of that house, and it doesn't look like I did a lot, but I did hundreds and hundreds of stitches. It's just a lot. This is a 40 count mallow, and those stitches are teeny, teeny, tiny. I don't know if you can see how little, but yeah, they take me a lot longer. I wish in hindsight that I had done this on 36. Um, sometimes I try to consider framing and I thought it would really make an impact to have this a little bit smaller, but um, I would have done 36 if I had it to do again. I love that project though. I love all the anchor threads that I'm using for it. I find them to be a little bit more muted and not as shiny as DMC. So I really enjoy the tones. They're just really pretty, almost more prim. 
So there's that. Not that you can't find DMC threads, they're prem, but there's something about the anchor, I think that almost lends itself better to sampler work. The um, last one I did on Sunday for our Stitch Lilies on Sunday sale, it's this beautiful, beautiful giant piece from Heartstring Samplery. A lot of you have already seen it. Several of you are stitching it with me. And I had shared in my last gloss tube that some of the threads were giving me pause. I'm converting a lot of these to silk. Not all of them, but several that will be uh, larger elements. I want it to be super, you know, enjoyable to work on. And um, so I have these dinky dies in here that are just really, really pretty and shiny. I have that for my snake. And I did go ahead and use this floss for the apples. Let me show you. It's a little bit brighter, but you know, it. I think it works. Uh-oh, I forgot to put that back in the bag. Yeah, I didn't get a ton, a ton done, but you can see that color and I think it's okay. Apples were supposed to be really, you know, or whatever the fruit of the, the tree of life was supposed to be very tempting and I think those colors are gorgeous. So yeah, it's not a lot of Beth's um, colors. Hang on just a second. Sorry, my allergies are not being good today. Um, a lot of Beth's colors, as I was saying, sort of tend to go more toward the pinky mauve um, side. And so I like kind of the peachy pinks, but I really prefer more of a darker red. So um, I don't think I'm gonna use that one on the house. I think I will use the iron bark color on the house, but I was happy with the colors so far. I did end up pulling in um, for the trunk, this sewing circle by Victorian Motto that was in my, I think it was June's flosses or maybe May's. They're coming so late that I'm losing track. I still don't have July's um, and I got June's like just a couple weeks ago. <laughs> so um, I did pull that out though for the tree bark because it does have some good variegation on it and I just couldn't find the right silk. If I can see things in person, it would be so much easier, but I did more work on the top as well, just working my way over. This is such a giant piece. And you just work and work and think you've done a ton and then you step back and go, oh wow, I still have so much to do. And I did blow up, I'll just flash it real quick. I did blow up one of the pages because there were a lot of, um, a lot of counting to be done on the tree and I'm being so careful to keep everything centered. I'm gonna work on the tree and then the house and then just kind of work out from there so that I don't get off track. Because boy, if you get off track on such a giant piece, I can't imagine how disappointing that would be. So that was what I worked on for the last couple weeks. It's quite a bit. And um, I thank you for letting me share that with you. I forgot to mention this whip of my punch needle. I'm using my Aunt Ruth's Squirrel Cotton and making that abbreviated design from Punch Needle Magazine. Okay, I had another section I wanted to show with some haul. My light is getting a little brighter and I realized I was a little bit close in the previous frames when I was showing my stitching. I think you can see all of my stitching though, so I apologize if my face is a little bit up close and personal. But um, I did find some fun finds over the last um, two weeks, some free stuff and some things from my clubs that I'm in. So I just wanted to share those. Um, this is totally not stitching related, but it just kind of shows my personality. I love Converse and this pair was $22, I think, on um, converse.com. <laughs> if any of y'all like funky shoes, those are so cute with the flowers and they have a sale going on right now. So I did get some new shoes and they're super soft and comfy. So that was fun. And then my mom, um, I'll try to insert a picture of the way she used this, sent me this whole um, curtain panel plus this little bit here of fabric and I just thought it was so cool. It's some vintage like bark cloth. If you're familiar with that, it's real almost canvassy. And so I'm going to be doing some work in my front room and I just love those birds. I thought it looked like something that would make a pretty sampler, doesn't it? But um, I'll try to insert a picture of how that's going to look in my big window by my um, front room where I have these kind of sea glass kind of colors. It just worked out so perfectly. So 
thanks to mom for that. I know she's watching. And then I found a um, hint or a tip from Annie at Joyfield Stitcher about a D stash from, I believe her name is Allison Rosen. I don't know if it's still going on. She was really cutting her prices because she was basically downsizing all of her collection. And so I got um, some beautiful hand dyed wool which if you know anything about wool, it can get really expensive. This big piece of black here um, is probably maybe 20 by 27, and I got that for, I think, $5. And then these pieces over here were like $3. I mean, she was almost just giving it away, and it's hand dyed and super pretty. I'm gonna be making some runners out of that for fall. So I was just thrilled to get all that wool. Um, I'm getting quite a collection actually over my head so I need to really get to, get to working on that I think Mary might could help me with some of those um, applique tips and then she had a whole bunch of quilt scraps um, I think I paid three dollars for these and they're just colors that I really like I love a dark red polka dot and then um, some really pretty greens and they're very prim looking for the most part there were a few that I couldn't use but um, a ton of homespun That'll be great for fall as a background ruffle. So that was really nice. And I will try to link her D stash on Instagram if it's still up. And this was probably two weeks ago. So I don't know if she still has any left, but like I said, she was almost just giving that away. That's gonna be perfect for um, finishing. I got these for my June um, Primitive Stitcher our primitive set of threads from Victorian Motto. And I almost over dyed these two on the end. One of the issues I have with Victorian Motto, as much as I love it, is she does a lot of pink and purple, which is just not my favorite. But these are a little bit more grayed out. And I think this would be good for some of the fruit in my um, Feast of Friendship by Blackbird Designs that I'm gonna start in October. So I went ahead and pulled those out because these do look like grapes and um, some of the berries in that cornucopia and the browns are great warm chocolate and this um, old tin just really pretty and that's 20 yards so I heard that her clubs are almost full if you're interested in Nancy Turner's um, floss or fabric I would jump on that you have to wait a long time because of all the postal issues but you do get it and it is gorgeous here's the fabric Sorry, my son is back from McDonald's with his dad. <laughs> they went through the drive-thru. But this um, little eighth of a yard I got, it's called Colonial, 32 count. And she does have beautiful fabric. It's Zweigart base. There's the orange. And um, I want to do a quarter yard, but I like to do my little Brenda Gervais pieces and some of my ornaments and things on 32 count so they're not so itty bitty. But um, I'll probably switch to 36 after I get enough of these built up in my stash because they come in handy for all kinds of things. For instance, <laughs> this um, Viscornu, this is kind of a sneak peek. Um, Heartstring Samplery put out a Tudor Rose Viscornu for our um, guild, the Tudor Rose Guild. And we were able to get this at a really deep discount as a thank you for becoming a or for being a part of the guild and um, I just love this I think it's really pretty she's gonna be doing more of this the poppies came out I think a couple months ago and this one I think it may come out um, I don't know when it'll come out I'm just guessing if I if I said I don't know when it'll come out but I do know that it will eventually be available to y'all so keep a lookout for that if you like the score news and then um, I went ahead and printed out a freebie I had mentioned um, Santa's and Sampler blog. This is the pair that I was referring to. I told you they were so cute. The berries we've been stitching with Erica Michaels um, remind me of this, but isn't that a great design for free? And she gives you a template on the back. Marlene had told me she had made some of these and they're all on the blog that I'll link again. She has like a patriotic one. She has a, a St. Patrick's Day, all these different you know, um, types of pairs and they're, they're small. They're 80 by 81 by 67. So, um, not super big, but she even does a leaf at up top and a stem. So I will be putting those in my 
stash and printing off a few more, but I wanted to show you um, what I was talking about because it sounds kind of weird to say, you stitch up hair, what do you mean? Those are from, her name is Marley. I did have some of y'all comment back, so thank you for that. Um, and again, I apologize if my angle was a little odd the first time, but I will um, come back and show you my fully finished objects. And please let me know if you have any questions. If I forgot to mention any fabric count, I did have a comment about that. I will list all of the fabric counts and floss to the best I can remember in the description box. I do a lot of my own over dyeing and hand dyeing, so not all of the um, fabric choices are an option, but you can try to um, replicate that, of course. And then um, one comment I did have, um, and I just kind of wanted to reiterate, was, you know, oh, I don't have um, as good as ideas as you, you know. Um, and I just wanted to remind you, I get a lot of my ideas from other floss tube friends that share and from other stitching friends. And that's part of why I wanted to make videos. I am a new stitcher, a newer stitcher, and I need lots of inspiration. So I thought it would be helpful to always try to share what I've picked up and not to make you feel bad that, oh, I wish I was creative, um, but just to inspire you and to um, share because we are better together. I do believe that. Um, I'll build off of one idea that someone has and you'll build off of my ideas and make them your own and we'll be so much better for the experience, for the sharing and um, for being creative and making do with what we have. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in a little bit. Hello, I'm back today to update y'all on the fully finished objects that I um, was able to finish yesterday over the weekend. I told y'all that I had a couple of projects almost finished, I showed you two, but I forgot one. And I've shown most of these finishes on Instagram and gotten lots of positive feedback, so thank you. Um, I had one comment that I must not have slept this weekend and just done stitching. And actually, like I said, I was within 50 stitches of um, finishing some of these objects. So it was just a matter of procrastination. <laughs> I got them all finished. I also wanted to share a couple of things I made really quickly. I had taped this in my earlier segments, but I was a little bit too long winded. So I cut it out, but I have um, shared on Instagram these stickers and I'll insert a picture to the left or the right of um, some of the ones that I've already sent away from Mrs. Cog's website. She has these beautiful botanicals that um, are very samplery and a needle and thread set that has some sewing vintage images and she's just scanned them into her um, shop on Etsy as a download. They were $1.77 on sale. So if you're interested in vintage stickers and ephemer ephemera for your uh, stitching journal, then check those out. I printed some of these, or I figured out after I had started printing them out, I printed them on this sticker paper from Amazon. And that way you don't have to paste and um, attach them to anything, but they're just, um, cute images that you can find in Mrs. Cog's Etsy shop. Here's one with some inking around the edges. That's going to a particular friend. You can probably guess who. And then um, I also had dyed a lot of red floss from my Aunt Ruth, the um, collection I shared with you last week. I didn't really showcase the reds, but there were eight eight yard skeins of this very, very bright Christmas red. And I don't see my original but um, it was very neon and I darkened it up. I will put the um, process at the end as best I can. It was very disjointed and interrupted by my kids, so I didn't do a dedicated video. I'll just do a little voiceover to explain to you how I over dyed this floss to make it, and the light is really bright right now, to make it more of like a scarlet that is my preferred red. So that worked out really cute. I have it ready for a red sampler and another, finish I had, which is not cross stitching, but it is stitching. I had shared this tag from Kathy Schmitz earlier in my video that was almost finished. And last night I was able to finish it. It has, um, a lot of wonky stitches cause I am learning embroidery. I, I know my grandma showed me when I was little how to do it, but it just takes practice to figure out the, um, way to make your stitches more even. There's some satin stitches on those beads and I put some beads up here on the crown. I thought those turned out so pretty. 
and it's just a dollar um, as a PDF. I did sandwich it with some felt on the back. This isn't going to show where I have, have intended to hang it, so it doesn't really matter, but I sandwiched some sari silk in there, and I have some beads and charms that kind of hold it together at the top, and I think it's just such a pretty little creation, just because <laughs> it doesn't really have, you know, a frame or place like that, but it's just going to hang, and it had some interfacing on the back to kind of seal the stitches in, and then another layer of felt, so it's got some heft to it, and I used that antique lace that I found at an antique mall for about a dollar. And I had to cut um, a piece that was a little damaged. So I've got some glue here. This will be kind of stiff when it all dries, but hopefully it won't unravel any farther. And it's hand done tatting. I think it's just beautiful. So when all the shops are back open and COVID's hopefully over, be on the lookout always for those antique linens that you can, and this one was so damaged, I did not feel bad about cutting it up, but it definitely offered yards of beautiful hand done tatting. I think that's what that's called, or at least just handmade lace. So beautiful little object. I think that's gonna look so pretty on my bee collection. The next piece I finished, again, I had already shown you in a um, interim state, but here it is all done. This be well turned out so cute. My daughter said, that looks like something from our favorite painted tree marketplace. And I said, oh, thank you. And she said, why don't you sell those? I was like, do you know how long these take to make? I would have to charge too much. This um, process of finishing, I actually am gonna attach a little tutorial at the end. Um, I've never finished an octagonal piece before. It was such a strange shape. It's not a circle, it's not a square but I wanted to fit it on here and it was just a little tight with the edges of this um, charcuterie board here that I finished. And so instead of worrying about making it, you know, hang over the edge or, well, it does hang over the edge. Instead of cutting it off or worrying about that, I just made it kind of more purposeful and these edges definitely kind of soften that. But the bow with some Hobby Lobby ribbon, this is some old, paper I had, paper flowers that I threw in tea a while ago. I always try to keep like a bowl of different um, finishing accessories so that I can just, I actually have them on a turn to, um, style and I just dig through and that pearl vin vintage button there goes in the center. I don't know if you could tell that's a button, but I love it. <laughs> it's going to go on my B shelf as well. I have three pieces now, counting the one that Helen made for me. And is that right? Three? Yes, and I have two more that I hope to add to it by the end of my little capsule I'm working on. So, love this, and again, there's a tutorial at the end, just a real quick um, voiceover of how I put that together. So, that was finish number three. Um, the fourth thing I finished, and um, like I said, I, I recorded some of this already, but I think I was too long-winded, so I'll try to be briefer. I made some really pretty, um, project bags in the same process as my Vana um, bee bag I showed you last time. This is more of my sunflowers. It has my sunflower garden inside and I um, made it a little bit bigger this time. It's more of like a legal size um, so it can go for like a taller chart if I have something that's a little bit bigger. And I stitch in hand so I don't use Q-snaps or hoops or anything and I love the way this turned out. I just lined the big one with muslin so that um, I don't have any colored fabric up against my linen. That makes me a little bit nervous. And then I made a smaller one that does have some interior fabric, which is super fun, but this is more for like little tiny projects that won't sit in here for very long. So that was a lot of fun. And I encourage you to watch Vana's tutorial if you want to know how to make them. They're made to my size specifications, but I followed her instructions other than this stitching at the bottom. I don't think she does that and I kind of prefer it to have a little bit more of a solid, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, quarter inch seam. So made those, and the last one is a bigger finish. In fact, this is heavy. <laughs> um, I had a frame from my mom. This doesn't match perfectly, but it fits perfectly, so it is gonna be home to my patriotic poppies that I've been working on for several months. I don't know why this piece took me so long. It was almost like I had a, a mental block on all these leaves. 
and I did not do them completely as specified. I started to think this doesn't really matter <laughs> if the pattern's a little bit different. Once I had the flagpole and I had the alphabet in um, and the ones that go over the cart finished, I just kind of started to fudge it a little bit inside. I also think I added some extra felt flowers on this so that it's, um, you know, maybe not stitched one of the little ones should have been, but I put, I know that top one there, I put a felt flower rather than stitching it. I was just kind of over this project by this point. I was like, okay, you know, 4th of July is already over. I've put up most of my patriotic pieces, but I will um, display this downstairs with my summer stuff until I put out fall. And I have the next sheep that pulls a pumpkin full of orange flowers um, ready to start. And I have a um, frame that is the exact um, same frame as this. And I'm gonna put these together over here in my um, sewing room so that even when it's not in season, I'll have the pair together. And I think they will look so pretty, especially in the matching frames. So there is Patriotic Poppies by With Thy Needle and Thread. And I'm gonna um, display this for a little while. I'm very pleased with it. I did chalk paint this frame a little bit for my mom. It was kind of yellowed, I think, from um, the sun. It had been coated in some poly, I don't know if that's exactly what she had on it, but it was very yellow. So I coated it with some white chalk paint and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I thank you for letting me share my projects. I have um, not a lot of plans for August um, to kind of finish out my video um, other than the tutorials at the end. I um, had thought about Arbitrary August, which is a um, Stitchy Mommy group, I think, as far as just spinning a wheel and doing things arbitrarily and I really think I want to work on what I want to work on so I might just do it as a whatever I feel like working on that's what I'm gonna work on um, I know I want to finish those pieces that are almost done like my potting shed and I want to put more work into Sarah Woodham all creatures great and small consider the lilies in Hawkern Hall. That's enough right there. That's plenty, right? I have this rotation of um, working on consider the lilies on Sunday, which I'm going to do in just a little bit here. And the rest of the month, we'll just see how it goes. And I hope to check back with you in a couple weeks as I um, finish all of my videos. In Psalm chapter 90, verse 17, it says, may the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. Thanks so much for watching. Here are the shades I dyed with two shades of brown, two shades of red, a lighter and a darker. The orange did not work out, so you won't see that one. Hot water with vinegar, a tablespoon, was my prep. Here's the reds, 64 yards that I had from my aunt that were really bright. I wanted to tone them down and make them more variegated. I didn't have luck with the other two colors, so you won't see those. Just the reds today. This came from Bucilla and it died differently than DMC, maybe because of its age, maybe because of the vinegar. That was the first time I've tried vinegar. I soaked them with a clothespin, keeping them together so that they don't tangle, just to open up the fibers for the dye. I needed gloves. Here's just some vinyl disposable and Two liter bottles for soda. Diet Coke has the right notches at top and bottom that's helpful. I used some tan, a favorite color, and put that in the hot water about a tablespoon at a time. My dye ended up being a little thin this time. I would have actually used less water. That was one cup of water and I probably would have used half a cup. You almost want it kind of like a sludge. I think I got better variegation when my paint or when my dye was thicker last time. Make sure you mix really well and shake your paint or your dye before you put it in. A white plate was a trick I learned from Michelle Farm Girl to test the color. It really isn't easy to see in the jar. When you spread it out on the white plate, you see the undertones a little better. This ended up being a little more red and orange than I wanted. I was hoping for a more neutral dark brown like an umber and so I added in some instant coffee. This Taster's Choice individual 
pack is perfect. You have to use instant because it's much more concentrated than the grounds. And make sure your water's hot enough. You might have to reheat it, otherwise the coffee won't dissolve. I use instant coffee. In fact, that was the last pack I had gone through the entire box quite a bit. You can't tell here as well as I'd hope. It is better. It is more um, the color I want, but it instantly bleeds. I should have started with a fresh plate or rinsed that one off. The spoon was a mistake. Don't do what I did. The hot water actually made the water pink with a spoon. Kind of makes you nervous to eat from that too. Here's the test of the dark red with charcoal and the bright red with cocoa brown. Looks kind of like a bloody bandage, sorry. But that was um, my two different reds, scarlet and cocoa brown, like I said, and scarlet and charcoal the darker one. I really liked that charcoal. Here's how you uh, kind of spool the thread onto or the floss onto the Diet Coke 2 liter. The reason you need the 2 liter is because the inside is clear and you can, or the jar is clear, and you can tell whether you've saturated the floss. It's very helpful. Um, if you want to do a variegated finish, you need to be able to tell that you're not only painting the tops of the thread and the inside's all going to be the same color. Like I said, my dye this time was a little thin, so I didn't necessarily get the variegation that I had had in the past. I had had better luck with greens and a pink I did. This red, I think, was so dark already that it just didn't stripe, um, or not stripe, but variegate. It did almost have a variegation but not the way I expected and it definitely changed color you'll see the end result the color was much more to my liking I had a catastrophic spill not gonna lie <laughs> that's when I moved to the sink everything came up with a miracle eraser thank you Lord but this dark medium and bright um, floss were my end results here the tutorial I watched on YouTube said to wrap this with saran wrap at this point and put it out in the sun to sort of heat set. I did not have saran wrap so I used a Walmart sack and put it out on my trampoline and it was a hundred degrees today so I'm pretty sure I generated enough heat with that plastic and the sun, the hot Fort Worth sun. You can really tell the color difference there. Um, and of course they're going to dry like 75, I don't know percentage wise, but a lot lighter. They're going to dry a lot lighter. I did take them off of that and rinse them. I also did some that I just dipped. I think I'm showing you that now. And these, I moved the clothespin around. You can see if you don't, you'll get a, a line. But I did dip several after a while. The Soda pop was taking too long. If you're just doing a few, like three skeins of floss, the soda um, bottle is not bad, but I was getting impatient. And plus I had to prepare for my daughter's birthday, so I was in a hurry. Here's the final. I have this dried again in the sun and rinsed and dried again. And there's the top starting point and the bottom. They turned out so pretty. Lots of Christmas stitching ahead and maybe a big monochromatic red sound. Here's my Be Well tutorial on this octagonal finish. Cut the corners off of the square that's going to fit around your piece. This was a little oblong. And cover it with a thin layer of batting spread out so that it doesn't get bunchy anywhere. Cover your stitching. I made a sandwich with that um, octagon piece on top and I pinned it around the edges. These pins aren't going to stay but they need to keep things centered. Use a really strong knot when you do the gathering. If you gather the whole thing and then it pops through it's going to really be frustrating so Make sure you do that in, I did several passes around on this one. It needed some extra, and especially in the corners. And then I used tacky glue from Aileen to put
push it down onto the board with something heavy on top. And here's the finish. I love the way it turned out. I'm thinking about putting 2020 at the bottom with some kind of placard. And thanks for watching.